I'm Rob from Salsify. I'm here today to talk about the new B2B consumer. Now, if you started a job in the early 2000s, you were given a BlackBerry. And I love my BlackBerry. BlackBerry is one of the greatest devices ever made. And one of the things that drove the BlackBerry proliferation is the fact that they were embraced by IT, right? They were the sanctioned phone of choice that had security and reliability and connections to the internal systems that they had built out. Now when the iPhone came out, a lot of executives started preferring the iPhone. They loved their iPhone. They started carrying it around everywhere and they wanted to use it for work and they started hooking up to their work email addresses. And this caused a huge struggle with the IT departments at the time who knew that the iPhone at that time didn't have the same level of security that the BlackBerry had and didn't have the same level of integrations with their internal systems. But that push from those executives drove the IT department to have to accept the iPhone over time. This was the beginning of the bring your own device movement. And analogously, you see the exact same thing happening in the B2B world. Consumer trends are pushing backwards to Im impacting the business. The same consumers that are shopping on a B2B distributor's site or B2B retailer's site are used to Amazon's experience. They're used to Amazon search navigations. They're used to the level of reviews and images and specs available. In fact, 82% of B2B buyers admit to having used Amazon to do their search, right? So they're going to Amazon, they're doing other research, and then they're buying somewhere else. They buy wherever the company tells them to buy. Now, what this does over time is erode the buyer's market share. Amazon business is blowing up. People are used to this experience. Now, really smart and savvy B2B distributors, B2B retailers, folks like Granger have invested a lot in the search navigation and content experiences on their sites over years to set themselves up for this digital change. In fact, Granger is already at 56% of their revenue coming through digital. Now, if you think about these trends, it totally makes sense, right? You're used to a certain type of experience on your day-to-day -day shopping and you expect to have at least that level of experience when, when you're at work. 10 years ago, most people used okay email clients. Now a lot of corporations are using Gmail because it's a lot faster, right? So if you look at the entire buying cycle on B2B, this impact is felt in a lot of different ways. So first of all, uh, as the new generation of buyers comes up in the business world, the millennials and Gen Zs, they don't want to talk to anybody. They hate using the phone other than to snap each other or, or whatever they're doing. And they prefer on a factor of three to one to self-service their own information and their own research online. They're the ones that are going to Amazon and other sites doing research before they, before they uh, elect to buy. Secondly, when they buy, in the next three years, Forrester predicts that we're going to drop over the 50% mark of all purchases being made for B2B online. We're not quite there yet, but that's a very, very fast change. It's like a steamroller that's coming. Third, for reordering, people in particular, they really just don't want to talk to anybody. They want to hit a button and just reorder the same supplies that they get over and over and over again. So what this means for brands in particular that have a large business selling B2B, whether it's food service or industrial supplies or office supplies or whatever, what it means for them is that they have to take the search navigation branding and merchandising experiences through these major B2B sites seriously. In 2005 in the B2C space, e-commerce was largely about transactions. You just needed to get your products listed. In 2015, in those 10 years, it had evolved to being experiential based. Images, descriptions, Q&A, great reviews, things like that, that that drove the experience. Brands that didn't focus on those experiential processes, whether it's content management, whether it's content development, whether it's uh, being able to communicate those experiences to retailers in the meantime, lost market share. You see companies like Anchor, which basically didn't exist in 2000, becoming the absolute dominant player over Belkin in 15 years by focusing on digital experience. You see companies like Buy Brands coming out of nowhere and being a multi-billion dollar beverage business, taking a significant amount of market share and shelf space in a very short period of time because they focus on digital experience. The same thing is happening in B2B. Just like the iPhone and smartphones in general replace the BlackBerry, 
these types of shopping experiences that consumers are becoming increasingly used to are gonna dominate the future of B2B selling. The brand manufacturers that sell B2B that get out ahead of this are gonna be able to maintain their leadership positions in the B2B world over time. The ones that don't are gonna quickly find themselves losing market share, um, being attacked from upstarts and private label, and we're gonna see the exact same thing that, that happened in the, in the B2C world and the B2B world too, to those brands that are, aren't getting out ahead of it.